Over the last few years, I think since 2010, it's become a tradition that I record a New Year's message for anybody who wants to listen. Uh, this year is a little bit different in that instead of one long one, and some of them have been well over an hour, this time we're going to be doing three shorter ones because there are three particular themes that I want to pick up and focus on. Uh, the first one was actually triggered by my favourite atheist, um, Christina Rath from, I think, Bulgaria, if I am got it right. And uh, she is, shall we say, she goes so deeply into uh, atheism that she's beginning to lose her joy in life logical process. You see, atheism is a part of development that most people go through at some stage in their youth, uh, but some never actually get over it. And there's also something that needs to be made clear, what exactly is an atheist? Because there are many people that use the label atheist, but are actually agnostics. Now, an agnostic is someone who says, well, there probably isn't a God, but, you know, if you want to believe in it, no problem. An atheist is someone who says, you must be rescued from the delusion of believing in a God. So the agnostic is passive and the atheist is proactive. Now, what actually triggered this one was uh, uh, Chris's New Year message on the 1st of January. Yeah, I'll send the link here. And uh, she was saying, well, all these New Year resolutions doesn't bring anything, nothing ever changes, nothing ever will change, it'll just continue getting bad. And it's not actually quite true. You see, even over the last 20 years, I've noticed tremendous changes in human consciousness. Well, not only human consciousness, biologists have noticed changes in the consciousness of other creatures on the planet as well. The, as we come out of the age of the dinosaur consciousness, the me, me, me consciousness, the, the age of the patriarchate, um, animals, or not just animals, but lots of insects and arachne and, and such like, who used to be very much the me, me, me individuals, have started cooperating. And as the planet moves from this age of dinosaurs into the age of mammals, that is the age of community, then community will develop more and more and more. Now, what is going to happen in 2015. Well, what is going to happen is exactly what you decide. And I now need to make a very small pause because I've just realized I've forgotten. Don't go away, I'll be right back. Back again. And what you decide is based very, very much upon your expectations. And this is very, very important thing to note. Life is never controlled by beliefs or willpower or wishes, hopes, anything like that. What you experience in life is exactly what you expect. There's a very good reason for this. The expectations are mostly completely unconscious. In fact, a true expectation is completely unconscious. And if you say intellectually, I have the expectation that, it's not an expectation, it's a wish. And wishes have no effect because they have no power. Expectations, and most expectations, are based upon programming from your early childhood they have direct contact to your power, the seat of your power, and they will always, always, always manifest themselves. 
And this is the trap that Christine has talked herself into. The expectation, the belief, the feeling that everything is hopeless because there's just one short life and that was it, nothingness. The only thing certain in life is death. Well, it's not actually true, Chris. Even for you, it's not true. Whether you want to believe it now or later when you leave your body, it's up to you, but it's easier to recognize reality now. Anyway, gets us back to the theme, what are you going to create in 2015? And the answer to this is you're going to create exactly what you expect. Right? What you don't know is what your expectations are because they're all unconscious. And because they're unconscious, they are so fast that you don't notice them with your conscious mind. Something stimulates them, triggers them, react, done. And then you stand there and say, well, well, what just happened here? All the people around you notice, but you don't. Because they don't have your expectations, they have their own. And because they don't have your expectations, they see your expectations manifesting themselves. So what you need to do is to get hold of your expectations and make sure that all of them are in accord with what you really want. It's that easy. In fact, it's so easy that in the third century, one group of people in Europe became so powerful that they almost toppled the Roman Empire until the Emperor Constantine made a pact with the then bishops to change the power structure. And one of the things that they agreed was that the followers of this particular teaching would no longer be taught how to manifest everything they want. They would be taught a replacement, an ersatz, which has no effect because two major parts of the methodology had been made a state secret. A little bit later, a group called the Knights Templar gained access to the secret parts and they became themselves very, very powerful, but not quite powerful enough to replace the papacy. And the papacy crushed them in 1307, Friday the 13th of December. That's where we get the expression, Friday the 13th is a bad luck day. So in everyone is this power is latent, hidden, ready to use if you know how. And that's what I wrote this book for. That's all that it is, the step-by-step -step guide for doing exactly that, everything that you want. Right now, and always. All that this book does is teaches you how to change your expectations from those limiting, those destroying, those creating problems, to change your expectations for expectations of being rich, being loved, being in peace. You can do it. There are no exceptions. You can do it. I mean, this is the basic teaching of Jesus and every other spiritual master that just show you, this is how to do it. Unfortunately, because of the patriarchy, the age of materialism, the me, 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 dinosaur age consciousness, 
somebody pretty quickly grabbed the teachings and changed them and the powerful bit became a secret. Well, they're not a secret anymore. They're here for you right now. Printed book or PDF download. You can get it right now today from this website. Now, the next part of the New Year's broadcast will concern what's been happening in the Kingdom of Germany, why it is such an enormous opportunity for us to very rapidly change everything, the mass, the potential, the breakout. It's all there ready. Years and years and years in preparation and now it's there and we need to do very, very little more. So, and then there is a book called The God Delusion from Richard Dawkins. And it's a very interesting book because he claims he's going to prove chapter by chapter by chapter, step by step, that God does not exist. Uh, unfortunately, none of his proofs hold water. Uh, let me give you an example of one. Albert Einstein was a genius. Albert Einstein didn't like the Catholic Church. Therefore, God does not exist. I mean, you know, complete non sequiturs used as proof. Nonsense. And the book is full of it. Now, what I've <laughs> been promising myself to do for a number of years is, is to just take the book to pieces chapter by chapter by chapter and put them all up on YouTube for everybody to see. So that's um, the second um, of the other projects. And the third thing, and during the course of this year, uh, it's time that we demolish this fairy tale of infectious disease. There is no such thing, there has never been such a thing, and there can never be such a thing. The postulate itself is total nonsense and all the scientific facts, not the fairy tales, but the facts show that it does not exist and it's time that you knew it as well. Okay, see you soon. Keep smiling.